Hello and welcome to another video from In3D Software. Today I want to talk about some of the new features within IX23 and in particular the Import Room Scan, a new feature that's been released by IMOS that allows us to pull in information from external software and hardware and then have that 3D data uh, automatically create our room environments for us. So this is really useful for those projects that need to have high levels of accuracy, perhaps uh, stone worktops that um, would traditionally be templated can now use 3D room scanning technology to lay out the furniture in a very accurate way. So traditionally, if we go up to the room plan options, we can create rooms, drop doors, and windows into the uh, environment and we can resize walls and change them. However, if we want something very accurate, instead we can use the import room scan. And in this case, I'm gonna choose this office here and that will then create the 3D room for us. So I'll switch into realistic here for, uh, and you can see it's pulled through the heights and width of the doors, the swing direction and all of these uh, different angles in here for where we want to put our furniture. You can see it's brought through the sill height of our window as well. So how do we use this? Well, what we want to do is drop some furniture into this now. So what I'm gonna do is just go back into the top view and I'll switch to a 3D wireframe view so that we can kind of see in 3D. And I'm just gonna zoom in. You can see I've got this angled section here. And what I wanna do is go to my furniture. So I'll go to my configuration tool click on the um, global settings and I'll just import some uh, settings in here. So I'll load up oak with a black worktop and then I'll click apply. And then what I want is a base filler right. So BFR and that will bring up my base filler right panel. I'll just click on the plus and you can see I can orientate it to my wall in here. And if I just pull this in nice and tight to the wall, it will then extend my worktop out to that wall for me. And I'll worry about this, uh, this filler in a second, but now I want to carry on in this direction. So I'll bring in my base to draw. And then in here, what I can do is just click on the plus here, drop that in and carry on planning in this direction. I'll bring in another product as well. In this case, a two draw with an inner draw in behind. I'll just drop this down and carry on with my planning. Okay, I need another base filler right, so I can right click and copy that entire article over. And this time I'll put it into this corner here, quite tight. And again, it's then going to detect that angle of that wall there and allow me to pull that product through. What I'm gonna do is bring through a double door unit now. So I've got a base two door. So I just wanna bring through this one, which is a two door, two draw product. And I'll drop this down next to it. And what I'm gonna do is use the stretch tool to then stretch this back to um, this end point here, which is gonna be that point right there. So I've got a very accurate measure now. And then what I wanna do is come off in the opposite direction. So I'll go back and bring in my base filler left. So let's do base fill left. And again, I'll just drop this down into this corner here. And what I want to do now is bring in my products again from over here. So I'll just bring in this product and copy it over. And then I want another one, which I'm gonna bring over. And this time what I'm gonna do is have that stretch up to the end point here. And then I'm gonna stretch with a difference of 20 mil. So now you can see my end panel has fallen in line with my fronts of my uh, units here. So I can start to make some changes. So what I'm gonna do is just select my infill panel there now, and then I can grab the contour and then just pull that out so that that contour now matches very 
accurately to the side of that line there. And then just click tick and that'll extend that infill all the way up. Same with this one. And in this case, I'm going to have that go all the way into the corner and then all the way up. And then what I want is for this one down here to do the same. So let's grab that one. And we'll just turn off our line thicknesses here. Okay, click tick. And then what I want to do is alter some of my variables in here just so that these look nice. So if I switch into a realistic view, uh, what I want to do now is go to my options for my draw pack here and go to basic data and then material case and say that that right hand side panel there should be finished the same as the draw. And if I just click apply on that, it'll then match through. I also want to change it so that it's not got the scalloped sides. So I'll go to the construction and go to side control and say that it's a standard side panel. And then what I want to do is modify my plinth here and have that return all the way around. So let's go to the option for the plinth. And in here, I'm going to say on the right hand side, that should be minus 40 mil and it should be mitered. And I'll just copy that into my right hand slot. So you can see in here, I'm going to end up with my plinth running all the way around with a split just on my line here. And then if I just click tick, what I want to do is now extend that work top just so that that lines through. And if I just come in, I can use the measure command to measure between my work top points. So I need to extend this out to the 20 mil for the overhang. So I'll just go to my work top here and again, just measure that overhang at 20 millimeters and extend that right out. Okay, so I just need to extend my plinth a little bit in there and I might oversize these just to be very accurate and have them scribed in. So I'll just oversize that uh, in X an extra 40 millimeters. So I can select that and modify that size uh, to the right 40. There we go. And I need to do the same on this side as well. So that is going to come in and be a measurement of 239. There we go. And I need my end panel on here as well. So what I might do is have like a waterfall end panel on this one. So what I'll do is just come into here and say vertical panel. And in this case, change my material to match the worktop. There we go. So the only thing do, to do now is to probably change this product in here, I think, because that would uh, not open. So I need to change that into be a, a, a single one door product. So let's do a base one door. Let's just pull that one in. Drop that in. There we go. And oh, just need to make those changes back to my articles now. So let's select that, make that quick change. There we go. So now that we've got our very accurate site survey, we can now put these into production. So what I want to do is select my parts and I'll choose my worktop material. 
And in here, what I want to do is come down and make sure that these are included in CNC generation and that this material in here has its own um, finish and sheet size. So let's go into my sheet and then in my core material sizes in here, I can add a sheet size. So in this case, I'm going to say that this is 2800 by 2070. And then I can click apply on that. And the next thing that I want to do is now save this job and put it into production. So let's save the order. And we'll call this bespoke room. Generate the CNC data and click save. So in this case, I'm going to run it down a workflow for my new BSC cam nesting uh, workflow. So let's choose that. And I'll just click start. So now that the uh, job has been processed, let's have a look at the results. If we go into the CAM report in here and bring this up, we can see that we now have all of our individual parts. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we have all of our carcass material, front material, and then in here we also have our worktop material. So you can see we've got our very accurate nesting layout of our parts. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're more than happy to help. Thanks for watching.